explosive new film, Flynn, Deliver the Truth, Whatever the Cost, exposes secrets behind the government's takedown of General Michael Flynn. Flynn knew what the intel world had been up to. He ordered the first audit of the use of contractors. This set off alarm bells. He told the truth. He was the most dangerous person for Donald Trump to hire. They had to get rid of Flynn. Flynn, Deliver the Truth, Whatever the Cost. Available now. Watch it today. Go to SalemNow.com. SalemNow.com. Good morning and welcome. Picture Radio News Hour. Joe and Jason on this Tuesday. Wrapping up April. Yeah, I mean, man, this year flying by. Said There is chaos in the markets today. Uh, we got the Fed. They're meeting right now. And I tell you what, I'm going to give you an idea of what they're doing. They're watching data. Yes, watching the data, and man, the data was downright awful today. We'll we'll update all of you on this. Jason and I, we were talking this morning, and we're like, is watching the data, is that the new inflation is transitory? Are are we watching Jay Powell once again? Uh, doing an Arthur Burns, despite what the data is saying, trying to ignore it, wishing it away. Uh, it is something that I think a lot of people are confused on. Everybody's anticipating some tough talk tomorrow. We'll see. Why do I get the feeling that? T- oh my gosh! Look at how, look at the dot chart. Look at they 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 moved some dots around on a chart, but. Uh, I think we're going to get more of the same. We're watching the data, and I'm going to tell you, we'll share with you what the data is saying. I'll tell you what the data is saying. The data is saying exactly what we've been telling you uh, from the very beginning. If you guys would go back and listen to our shows we were doing in 2020, 2021, we told you then, hey, there is no good choice here, right? There, there we're in the box now. Right? Everyone wonder, hey, when is the debt level really going uh, to start affecting things? It has. It absolutely has. It's happening right now. Why do you think he keeps saying, we're watching the data, instead of actually doing what their mandate says to do? They've only got two. So think about this. You only have two rules, if you all call mandates rules, and you're not following it, right? So what are the two rules? Full employment. Well, what do they consider full employment? Well, full employment to the Fed is anything where the unemployment rate is 4.5% or lower. According to that, now that's, that's not my, you know, that's not, I didn't make that number up. That's what they said, right? Well, what are we, 3.7, 3.8? Let's see. I know I went to public school, but yes, that is lower than 4.5. Heck, that's lower than 4. So that would mean, okay, let's check that box. What's the other rule? State, well, they call it stable pricing. That's what they call it. According to them, again, not me, not Jason. Right? Them, they made the rule up 2% is stable prices. Well, what do we have? Well, I mean, I know they got 3,800 inflation numbers. But essentially, every number they've got is somewhere between, say, 3% and 4.5%. Now, back to my public school education, Jason. That says, let's see, that's higher than 2 the Fed should have been raising. Instead, Jason, they're watching the data. And they're always watching the data, but lately it seems like they're watching it a lot more. You know, that's, that seems to be uh, number one on their list. You know, they, they're, they're, they're back to saying not very much, aren't they, Joe? They're just going to yeah. wait around and, and, and watch the data. Uh, I guess, can they watch it more or less? That's a great question. What were you doing before you were watching the data? Right? Weren't you? Isn't that their job is to watch the data? But I guess it, you know what? It only applies when they want it to apply. Listen, here's our number 800 951 
0592, the website at allamericangold.com. We have a sell-off in gold and silver today. Uh, I, I'm going to tell you right now, this is nothing more than buying opportunities. Uh, we've got a great show lined up for you. So many things to talk about. Uh, what's happening in Asia, the overwhelming amount of gold demand uh, led by China. And I'm going to tell you right now, no one wants to talk about it, but the Japanese are buying the, the Japanese yen. Nobody's admitting it. Was there intervention in the yen yesterday? Probably. Well, what's going on today? It's going right back, right? Falling out of bed once again. The two-year note back above 5% as we got terrible data out across the board as the Fed has been watching, quote-unquote, watching the data. Uh, we got data from the labor market. Now, this is, a, this is an important one. When we look at uh, inflation data, one of the big things about inflation is wages. And, of course, this is supposed to be something where, I don't know, again, maybe magically it was supposed to happen. All of these wages were, were supposed to start coming down, right? It's supposed to start leveling off. But when nobody can afford, Jason, when nobody can afford to buy things, like, what are we talking about? A double steak burrito bowl. Oh, I guess it's not a burrito bowl. Double steak burrito at Chipotle. $39. Remember when, you you know, 20 years ago, $39 was a high-end filet at, at, at a, you know, maybe not the highest chain restaurant, but at a nice place. $39. Now you, you get that going to Chipotle Wages skyrocketed much more than expected. A huge gain in the first quarter. 25% higher than anybody had predicted. And guess what? That was probably the good data today. We'll be back with more. Stay with us. 800-951-0592, Eight hundred nine five one zero five nine two. the year of chaos, 2024, the last day here in April. Uh, yeah, I'm just going to say this, May Day, May Day, that's probably what we're going to be saying in the month of May. Uh, the Dow, down 300, and I think it's just getting started. Uh, the S&P down 35, the NASDAQ down 128, uh, the 10-year note, 467, 468, getting back awfully close to 475, right? The danger zone on the 10-year note. All the other notes, especially the lower yielding notes, skyrocketing uh, above 5%. And again, it's a debt problem. Have you not figured it out yet? Uh, when you keep printing money out of thin air, this is what happens uh, and, and it's easy to tell. Right now, you got gold down 40 plus. Buy it. 23.10 right now. Silver's off a dollar, uh, at, at 26.42. The currencies. Again, right? The dollar, it's so funny. Dollar strength. Why is the dollar strong? Because inflation is so bad. Crushing. Uh, everything else and exporting its problems all over the world. This is why you're seeing more and more countries looking to the east, looking to China for help. We're watching the Japanese yen now, uh, back to 157 on 158, uh, as yesterday, remember it cracked 160. We think there was intervention. Nobody, you know, everyone wants to be hush hush about it. Even crypto, well, it's kind of something, you know, crypto and stocks seem to go together. Uh, trying to hold on to 60,000, like I said, get diversified, get to gold, get to silver while you can. And I mean that with all honesty. And then check out our friends over at Y Refi. Don't stay correlated to Wall Street here. This is a dangerous game that's being played. When, when you're sitting here 
talking about reckless deficit spending when you're sitting here. Listen, I gave you the two rules the Fed has. They're breaking those rules. Why are they breaking that? Why have, you know what, what's the point of having a rule if you're just going to ignore them, right? Well, because they really don't have a rule, because they don't know what they're doing. Well, or they do, right? To James Moore, they know exactly what they're doing. I'm going to tell you right now, the digital currency is coming, and it's coming like a freight train, and I hope, I hope, you, you've done what is necessary because, believe me, it doesn't come with Wall Street near all-time highs. It doesn't come then. No way. It's going to come when the crash happens, when this bubble bursts. And this is why we keep telling you, check out our friends at Y Refi. Right? What a great idea. Did I tell you, hey, put all your money there? Put all No, we tell you, be diversified. You get up to 10.25% fixed rate of return. That's not correlated to the stock market. You can use an existing IRA. You can use an existing IRA. You can buy gold and use y You can do both. If, as long as you got you got to have at least $50,000. Like I said, it's so great. You can turn your income on. You can turn it off. They let you do whatever, pretty much what you want. If you need your money back, they never attack principal. They don't do any of that stuff. Check them out. InvestYRefi.com. It's simple. Matter of fact, even simpler than that. Just call them. They'll talk to you about it. They'll tell you straight up how it works. 888-YREFI24. 888-YREFI24. So, so what happened? What in, in, in the green earth happened? That all of a sudden, the markets are worried again. Well, let, let's look at it. Obviously, in, uh, for inflation, wage data, red hot again. Then on consumer confidence, consumer confidence keeps falling. And, and, and I think, Jason, it's probably a sign of, hey, you know what? At the end of every week, at the end of every paycheck, I've got less and less money left. Right, and, and so many Americans, now they're saying that 30% of Americans now that used to be the working middle class, they're one set of tires, right? They're, they're one water heater breaking. They're one, right, whatever, AC unit going down away from economic ruin. And, and I think this is something where uh, you're seeing it in the conference when they talk to the consumers and say, hey, how are you feeling about things? Jason, all of a sudden the answer is we're not feeling so good. No, I, I don't think anyone's really uh, optimistic about what's happening. I mean, I know there's some market guys. They just look at the number, and if the number's higher over a period of time, they're, they're happy. Uh, that is until a 2008 drops on their head. And... Uh, so, you know, these pullbacks, Joe, they're going to happen. When are we going to get a serious one where it really pulls back? Uh, it may not happen this year. I mean, in inflation really skews the reality of the situation. If assets are going up, but they're going up slower than the inflation, then are your, are your assets really going up in value? It really depends, right, Joe? And the stock market, as we've been talking for you know, a couple years ago, I remember we were on the air saying, look, all the small cap and medium caps are getting destroyed. They're just not doing well. In a lot of ways, we have two markets. We have a an uptick market, a bull market for uh, six or seven stocks, and then we have a a bear market for a whole bunch of everything else. So you, you can't just look at the whole market for just seven stocks that are holding up the weight, and, and those seven or eight stocks can't always be up and keeping the whole thing up. Eventually, people are going to need money for uh, the everyday items. Joe, I mean, not everybody in the market are the big huge bear, you know, the big huge huge bankers and and uh, corporatists. And uh, no, it, we'll we'll see what happens, Joe. It's 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 obviously yeah. not it's not good. It's just not good. We don't you don't have the 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 problems that the debt and the government has to pay without problems. Well, look at what McDonald's said today. Right, McDonald's misses, and they said, "Hey, here's the good news. We keep raising prices. Here's the bad news. Less people are coming to McDonald's. Right, and McDonald's. I mean, that's the low end." Right, when we talk about fast food, right, Jason, I mean, who's the low end? Right, it's McDonald's. 
right? I mean, it, it's like, okay, uh, like uh, shoppers. Man, I can't really go to all my stuff at Walmart because they're the cheapest, right? Well, uh, what's left after Walmart? Nothing, right? Same thing in fast food. When you can't afford McDonald's, and that's what the McDonald's CEO was out today saying, hey, listen, there's just less people coming. Right? Here's the good news. We keep raising prices, right? But there's less people coming. And then how about uh, the PMI out of Chicago today? And, and this is the important one when we look at the different uh, Fed banks and stuff. The PMI in Chicago, remember, a number above 50 is expansion below 50's contraction. Last month it was at 41, and I mean that was terrible. They're expecting it to get a little better. It's supposed to go to 45. They came in at 37.9. The fifth straight month in a row, and here's what was kind of I didn't. Here's the thing I didn't like. It's done this before. A crash like this before. You know when it was. Right before Lehman Brothers collapsed. This is the exact same trend, but not the same. Because inside, let's look, prices paid rose at a faster pace. Wait a minute. You're deep into contraction and prices are still going up? Yup. How about new orders? Fell, fell at a faster pace. Well, that should mean prices should go down. It's not happening. Employment fell at a faster pace. Inventories. Uh-oh. Did, did it fall at a, You want that to fall at a faster pace. It didn't. It fell at a slower pace. Supplier deliveries fell at a faster pace. Production fell at a faster place. This this was one of the reports today, Jason, that really got the that two-year note in the Treasury skyrocketing. Because this is stagflation. This is exactly what we've warned people about. Yeah, yeah. And, uh, Joe, you had a much stronger push about stagflation coming a couple of years ago. You haven't talked about it as much. And, and uh, demand destruction. You know, it's, it's, it, we call it, but sometimes these things move so slowly that they, they happen months, if not years later. But it's here now, isn't it, Joe? You know, we, we talk about inflation, but stagflation is a better description where the price and values of things and then labor stays stagnant and the, and the prices of everyday goods just keep on going up. And we're seeing that, you know, we're in the middle of stagflation, Joe, for sure. Think about it. Wages higher. Yet McDonald's is saying less people are coming, Right. Prices paid for, for, for companies keeps rising, yet they're saying orders are falling, right? This is textbook definition of stagflation. And then yesterday after the markets, the Treasury came out and said, man, here's how much more debt we need to sell. And the range of debt that needed to be sold uh, what was, well, let's just say it came in all at the high end. So Q2 funding. So Q, Q2, that's tax season, right? So that's April, May, June. That's Q2, uh, as far as the Treasury is concerned. So we have tax collection. So this will be when the Treasury needs to borrow the least amount of money. Well, Last quarter, they saw, they said we're going to need to borrow two hundred and two billion dollars. That was wrong. They now say two hundred and forty three billion dollars. And after today's move in treasuries, that will be wrong. But what happened? Well, tax collections came in light. Pretty simple, right? They they just collected less tax than what they were hoping for. But nobody was watching that number, even though that was, some people only thought it would be $120 billion. So it was actually a lot worse than they thought. Q3. Okay, so this is going to be, this is the end of the fiscal year for the federal government, July, August, September. Well, unfortunately for all of us, they said, that they were going to need to borrow 
$847 billion. So essentially what the Treasury is telling us, we will start October with $36 trillion in debt. We'll finish the year. They, don't, they didn't give us Q4. It's going to be well over a trillion. And Jason, we're going to have over $37 trillion of debt before the end of this year. But here's the sad thing about this. This is with the Federal Reserve helping them because everybody knows the Fed's going to start ending quantitative tightening. Could you imagine what this would be if the Fed wasn't doing quantitative tightening? And, and here's the problem. I think after Q3, every, every, every quarter, with the exception of the tax quarter, right, which is the second quarter, we're going to see trillion-dollar deficits. I think we're going to see... 2025, most likely, we may set a record for the most debt in a single year. Yeah, just heat up one of those wars and start uh, sending a bunch of money and supplies over there, and you can uh, you can blow that up times two, right, Joe? You can see those deficits and that spending go out of control because, well, it's a, it's a war, and in times of war, you know, you must, you know, everything else doesn't matter. Inflation. You know, taxes, uh, interest on the debt, none of that matters. Spend, spend, spend. You know, and, and so it can be – this, this is because things are actually kind of boring, right? Things are kind of slow. Yeah. Uh, we just got the Dallas Fed numbers, uh, the worst since Lehman. Uh, so, again, we, we just got uh, Chicago PMI, now the Dallas PMI. Uh, big, big, big drops in both. Uh, you never like to hear – the worst since Lehman. That's never a good thing. Take the Radio News Hour. We'll be back after the break. 800 951 Patriot Radio News Hour. Joe and Jason here on this Tuesday. I've got a, a well, I'll call it limited because it's such a great item. I've got 75 $5 Indian. So remember, the Indians were the fractional gold for the St. God. So 08 to 33, the $5 Indian had the least amount of years in production. Uh, most of you will remember the first, what I'll call the first COVID, right? The, the 19, uh, what was it, 1916, right? They, they, had, they had the first outbreak the flag and it was uh, the five dollar indian it was the only coin where the united states actually engraved into the coin they put grooves in it they called it an accused design by the way as most of you know if you have ever listened it's my favorite coin. i think it's the best looking coin ever minted it was the male indian with with the uh with the war headdress on i mean it's it's a spectacular coin but they thought it carried the play. So they stopped minting it. Uh, I think they minted it, what, maybe 10 years total, 10 different years uh, that this coin had been minted. Uh, and, and usually, uh, and as most of you know, carries a, a bigger premium than the $5 Liberties, the older series coin. Mostly because there was A, so few minted, B, Everybody, you know, thinks it's 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 a super awesome design. But I've got 75 of them. It's all about price here. Six hundred and fifty dollars. Uh, that makes it ten dollars less than a five dollar Liberty. It's twenty dollars off its regular price, and it's great because it's fractional gold. It's a quarter ounce of gold. Six hundred and fifty dollars today. At 800-951-0592. And Jason, I would say of all the, the gold coins we, we sell, this one tends to be a favorite, uh, amongst the listeners as well. Cause we, A, we never, we don't run them very often cause it, we don't get the big supply like, like five dollar, uh, liberties or ten dollar liberties or twenty dollar liberties or safe. The Indians, it, it's hard to get this many. 
Yeah, they're not, they weren't made for as many years. The uh, Liberty design was made for more years. And when the confiscation happened, uh, the newer coins are typically the ones that were sitting in the banks, and so the banks gave up the more modern designs in, in a larger amount. Uh, and let's remember that inflation started as soon as the Fed took over in 1913. The inflation started. You had, the, you had a, a crash in the markets in 20, uh, tw uh, excuse me, 1920. Then you had the uh, big market crash in 20, uh, 1929. So when they did make gold illegal, a lot of these got swooped up out of the banks and were gone. So less years in the banks, uh, less coins overall, Joe. Yeah, and uh, I got to tell you, news is just breaking everywhere. South Korea, now remember, South Korea's got the same problem Japan has as far as its currency goes. The head of the South Korean Central Bank, is now saying that the Bank of Korea is considering purchasing additional gold for, for from a mid to long term perspective, looking at a trend of increasing foreign exchange reserves in the future. To this end, we will determine the timing and the size of gold investments by checking the development of domestic foreign exchange markets and trends in the international gold market. What does that mean? Real simple. We're holding too many dollars. It's starting to cause a problem, and we need to diversify. And now the Bank of Korea, they, nothing announced it, but this is how they do it. They're just like our central bank, right, Jason? Hey, we're going to talk about it first. And then we're going to, to, to start buying later. But again, here's another nation now saying that we're getting ready to, to add to their gold holdings. And, and again, what are they going to get rid of? Dollars. You know, and a lot of times it's not the smartest play to say you're going to buy a bunch of gold. So for all we know, they've already bought their gold. I mean, we did have this big, huge push in gold. Is this a part of that? You know, more countries buying at a, at a rapid rate. And then maybe a smaller country like South Korea, they just stop buying, and so things kind of go sideways for a little bit. But you don't really want to announce you're going to buy a bunch of gold, Joe. All that's going to do is everyone that wants to sell it to you is going to push their prices. So well, and, and uh, I think the announcement might more be more about saying we already did, but we're going to say that we're thinking about it. Could be. Could be. It's a good thought. But here's the thing. If they didn't announce it, Right, and then they get found out. Right, then it causes a different problem. Right, it's almost like, well, guys, if we don't announce it, and then they find out that we bought it, what what are, what are we saying to the markets in general? Uh, because let me tell you, so I read you that piece. I didn't read you the first paragraph where he told you how bad gold was. <laughs> right, but but then he said they're going to buy some anyway. So so you you can figure out right. They're all trying to we. How do we be? This is like being politically correct. This is like going woke in fiat money, right? This is the same thing. Okay, first I got to tell you how bad it is, but then I got to say, okay, yeah, we're probably going to have to buy some. We don't want to. Uh, and, and this isn't a sign of, of, of the death of fiat, but yeah, you know, yeah, we're probably going to buy it anyway. It's kind of like a green energy guy that uh, has to put gas in his car. <laughs> or or a green energy guy that has the electric car, but then uh, uh, he takes a trip, and uh, there are no electric vehicles to rent, so he has to uh, rent the gas car. And it's like, well, i got to have a vacation, so... I'll put my principles aside. I'll buy some gas. I don't like it, but I have a vacation to take care of, you know. So that's it's, it's kind of the same thing. Listen to this. Bloomberg through the South China Morning Post saying that China is now the dominant player in the gold market, saying that Chinese consumers... Okay, so this is not the Chinese central bank. This is Chinese consumers bought a record 300, and I'm going to round up here, 309 metric tons of gold in the first quarter alone. Uh, a, a, that is up 6% from the buying they did last year. Uh, which is an incredible amount. It, it's un, it really, when you think about it, at that pace, 
the Chinese consumer, right, would, would be buying 1,200 metric tons of gold on top of what the Chinese Central Bank is doing, on top of what it, Jason, there'd be no gold left at this rate. And this is something that they're saying that the appetite in China is unrelenting with valuations in the stock market, the depreciation of the renembi, right? China's playing a currency game with us. And, of course, property issues. The Chinese are saying we're going to gold in a way that the world's never seen, really. We'll be back after the break. 800 One little, two little, three little Indians. We got 75, well, we had... Seventy-five five-dollar Indians, less than five-dollar liberties today at six hundred and fifty dollars, at eight hundred nine five one zero five nine two. Uh, you know, and, and take the time, keep adding to these portfolios. If you're brand new, it's really easy. This is a great way to get into. Just call the number. One of the girls going to answer. You just tell them, I want the special. We're going to ask you one really hard question. How many would you like? That's it. That's all there is. You tell us. I want one. I want five. I want ten. I want all of them, whatever it may be. We're going to give you a trade number when you order. Every time you order, that trade number locks you in. What does that mean? Well, whatever gold does after that is irrelevant. Go up $50, down $50, nothing, whatever. Doesn't matter. You're locked in. I'm locked in. Uh, we've got uh, our office in Fort Lupton, up in Colorado, uh, here in Phoenix, uh, in the Deer Valley Air Park. Uh, if you're, if you want to come and pick up and pay, when you're, when we'll call you, we'll set an appointment. We're not a coin store, which is really nice. Just, you don't need people, you know. Watching what you're doing and, 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 and keeping an eye on you and the, you know, no offense to the coin stores. A lot of great coin stores out there, but they kind of, you know, you, you get that weird mix, right? Cause you get the, you know, I'll call them the tweakers, right? Going in and stealing, uh, selling grandma's jewelry and, and trying to, you know, get their mo- money for the next fix and pawn shops and stuff like that. Here, you're in our office. Nobody else is around. Uh, you're going to do your business privately uh, and, and without people looking over your shoulder, which is a great thing. Uh, if you're, yeah, I live. You know what? It's just too far. I, I don't want to go that far. I don't want to drive that far. Just mail us a check. Yeah, but the checks. You know, I'm going to mail it. I mail it. Say, check won't get there for five days. And what happens if gold does this or that? It doesn't matter. You're locked in. We're locked in. We ship FedEx. Well, our, our packaging is shipped FedEx. If you if you have a P.O. box, then we'll ship U.S. Post Office. Uh, but primarily, we ship FedEx, uh, Jason, and, and it's so easy. It's not complicated. Uh, don't believe all the you know, because that's what the the paper pushers want. Oh, it's so hard. No, it's easy. Uh, you, well, what happens when I want to sell? Call us. We buy it all back, and, and plus, we'll buy anything pretty much. Well, I don't want to say anything. I won't buy 1,000-ounce silver bars because I can't get rid of them. They're, they're just uh, big, huge, glorified paperweights. But we, we'll bid just about anything out there. And here's the other great part with us. Well, you're going to call me all the time. You're going to email us. You're going to bombard my phone, texting me and doing pressuring me. No. We don't make outbound phone calls. We don't. I mean, if you tell us, hey, call us. Can you call me when my check gets in? Can you, you know, obviously we'll call you. Hey, your product's in. Come pick it up. But that's it. But what, what if I did five hundred thousand dollars? You gonna start bothering me? Uh uh-uh. uh. Nope. If you called an order once and never called my phone again, you're not hearing from us. Uh, and I think a lot of people appreciate that, which separates us from just about everybody else out there. 800 dollars Indians. You're not, they don't, it doesn't come around too often. It's come around, you know, we've been lucky this year. I think this is the second or third time that you've been able to buy an Indian for less than a Liberty this year at $650. But listen to this. 
purchases of gold bars and coins, a.k.a. investment demand, surged 27% in China year over year. Uh, the Chinese Central Bank continues to add to its gold holding 17 straight months of purchases. China has now eclipsed India as the largest purchaser of gold jewelry as well. And, and Jason, now, listen, we know India is buying. We know China is buying. I'm telling you, the Japanese citizenry is buying. Now South Korea comes out and says, okay, well, we hate gold. It sucks. But you know what? We're probably going to buy more. South Korea, and yeah, there's a couple of countries that didn't want to buy gold suddenly are buying gold, you know, uh, over the last bunch of months. So uh, it looks like the trend will continue, right, Joe? It looks like a lot of gold buying uh, from central banks. And let's face it, these, these central banks like to work with each other. And if, oh, yeah. if the majority of them are doing it, essentially any central banks that aren't doing it, they're, they're going to join in. So it's a, it's a fevered pitch. And, you know, the, the, the Chinese appetite for gold, Joe, um, they're, they're trying to buy from the COMEX, which is cheaper than what they're priced at uh, in, in the East. So it's arbitrage. What they're doing is they're going to try to empty out at a lower price. If you can buy silver for 25 in the United States and sell it for 28 here or over there in China, then they're going to keep doing that, especially it's a good place to, to buy and hold also. If you can buy it w way lower than you can get it in Europe and Asia, then you're going to do so. And uh, that's going to force the price of gold and silver up uh, when, when uh, the COMEX no longer has supply, Joe. You're bringing up two really great points. First, this is so much better than because you'll you'll see if you follow gold. Oh well, the ETS, right? The paper guys, they're not buying gold. Wait till they do. Listen, let me tell you right now. Wall Street goes down three, four, five thousand points. They'll be piling in. It'll make it worse. But this is in strong hands. This is physical investment purchasing happening. Uh, much harder to manipulate and. The, to Jason's point, gold in Asia, it's, they're able to buy it from New York. They're able to buy it from London and, and send it over to China and make money. It's emptying out these vaults. It's another reason. Why did gold go from 1900 to, what did it go, you know, all the way to 2400? Right, right, yep. It's because the gold inventories are dropping. Why did silver go from twenty twenty two dollars to twenty eight dollars? Because the physical markets in London and New York, those vaults are emptying out. And Jason, it, it really is something when people are talking about what's happening with these emerging markets. They've gained a lot of wealth. Countries like Brazil and China and, and Vietnam, and now they're seeing their currencies erode. And these countries, these consumers, they're figuring it out, saying, "Hey, wait a minute! I'm going gonna, I'm gonna to get some gold because gold's the one thing that can protect my wealth." And, it, and it's creating uh, this this huge melt up in the in the physical demand of things. And I think we've got. Listen, the big move hasn't started. We've told you that. Be ready for it. 800 uh, 951 $5 Indians, $650. That is $10 below a $5 Liberty. Uh, that's a fantastic opportunity at 800 951 And then, man, the data just keeps getting worse here. California. Uh, revenue shortfalls much worse than expected uh, in California. Uh, huge misses in tax revenue. Uh, Jason, I think we're going to see a lot of these states now uh, having m uh, even bigger financial problems. Uh, the miss in California now could be approaching $80 billion, uh, a record shortfall for California. And, and it's going to be interesting what happens here because uh, the state, the municipalities, state budgets, 46 of the 50 states, their fiscal year starts July the 1st. You're probably going to see big reductions in spending and interest rates starting to kill the states now, Jason, just like the federal government, the difference is these states don't have printing presses. So when they've got to pay 
five, six, seven, eight, nine percent interest to finance these budget deficits. Well, it's just less money to go elsewhere. And if the rates don't go down, they can't borrow for cheaper, uh, so they're going to have to find a way, and this is why uh, you, you hit the taxes side of things. That, that's going to be the yep. biggest blowback of this whole thing, taxes, 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 taxes. Uh, they knew this all was going to happen, Joe. The, the, those that make the decisions knew it. I mean, how many years has it been since they announced 87,000 uh, new IRS agents being hired year over year over year? You know, they didn't put them all in all at once, but they're, that's the number. They're still hiring them. They're still putting in more and more. And because why? Well, they, they, if they're going to ha- charge higher taxes, they got to have someone go out there and, and, and rip it from your hands, whether you want to pay it or not, Joe. So. Uh, taxes in, in California. I mean, who knows what their taxes are going to look like in a couple of years? Boy, how about this? Uh, Washington governor announced $45 million worth of subsidies to allow low income families to uh, purchase electric vehicles. Yeah, here you go, right? Have fun, stay board. This is the new America. Right? This is the new America. You actually can't afford to buy anything unless the government comes out and gives you money. Uh, you know, we've said it over and over and over again. Uh, this is what's going to happen. when, the, At the end of this bubble, the vast majority of Americans, Jason, are going to own nothing. They're going to rent. They're going to lease. Right? They're, 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 they're no new car, no housing. Right? And are probably going to be working and needing government subsidies just to be able to stay, you know, you know, I guess that'll be the new uh, working middle class: is you own nothing and you get some government subsidies uh, to rent your place. Yeah, I, uh, when you were on your trip on Friday, I I covered a little bit of that. I actually played uh, on the believe it or not, Joe, on the Patriot Hour. I played Doctor Phil. <laughs> he was talking inflation, and he had a chart, and it showed that you know the lowest twenty percent, only thirty three percent of them are working. But after government help, they earn forty nine thousand. The next twenty percent, you know, above that, they earn about thirty one thousand dollars. With government help, they're at only fifty thousand. And Doctor feels like, why do you work? You know, the next twenty percent was sixty six thousand dollars a year. They get taxed down to sixty one thousand. No government help. And Dr. Phil on mainstream media saying, eh, nobody should work under this circumstance, Joe. When the mainstream media is covering it, it's coming, right? 800-951-0592. Three-star general Michael J. Flynn, head of the Pentagon Intelligence Agency, knew all the government's dirty secrets. He was one of the most respected generals in the military. Flynn knew what the intel world had been up to. He understood its funding. He ordered the first audit of the use of contractors. This set off alarm bells. The explosive new documentary, Flynn, deliver the truth, whatever the cost, and covers the facts behind this scandal. Flynn told the truth. He was the most dangerous person for Donald Trump to hire. I find out the worst enemy that I'm going to face in my life is right here in America. They took my assessment and they wanted me to change it. I was like, I'm not changing it. They had to get rid of Flynn. With in-depth interviews, archival footage, and never-before-seen personal records to the man behind the headlines. I just felt like I was drowning. Flynn. Deliver the truth, whatever the cost. Available now. Watch it today. Go to salemnow.com. salemnow.com.